Welcome back, Chemistry 30. Hopefully you had tr uh, time to do part B here. So how much heat energy is absorbed by a 2,000 kilogram granite boulder as the energy from the sun causes its temperature to change from 10 degrees to 29 degrees? So uh, we have to change kilograms to grams first of all. So it's one kilogram is 1,000 grams, so multiply by 1,000. It's granite again, so the specific heat is point. 803 joules per gram degree C and of course the temperature change 29 minus 10 19.0 degrees C so substituting that in uh, we get our specific heat multiplied by the mass multiplied by the temperature change you can see how the units cancel G's and G's degree C degree C we're left with joules 3.05 times 10 to the 7 joules and the last one here, what is the specific heat of an unknown substance if we have 2.50 G's of it and it releases 12 calories as its temperature goes from 25 degrees C to 20 degrees C. So it's releasing heat because the temperature is dropping and think of releasing heat as negative heat. It's being lost by the system. Also it, we're given heat in terms of calories, we have to change that into joules, mass, it looks like it's good, it's 2.5 G's, so that's fine. So just like we did earlier, we have to convert calories into joules by using this conversion here, 50.208 joules, and I slapped a negative in front of it because it is losing heat, it's releasing heat. So we have to put that negative in front. And the temperature change is negative five, because final minus initial, 20 minus 25 is negative five, so we're looking for C in this case. So we have C times M times T. So if I divide by MT on this side and divide by MT on this side, the M and the T's will cancel on the right hand side and I'll have my equation. And you can see the signs here will cancel out so that the specific heat ends up being a positive number as opposed to a negative. So whenever you see the releases or gives off or exothermic, make sure you put a negative in front of that heat value. So we should get 4.02 joules per gram degree C. And if we had a table of specific heats, we could actually look up the identity of that. So the specific heat of a substance really measures the ability of that substance to absorb or release heat. And that kind of leads us to this next question here, which is interesting. One lawn chair is made of aluminum. Another lawn chair is made of iron. Both chairs are painted the same color. On a sunny day, which of those chairs would be hotter to sit in and why? So aluminum and iron, if we look up the specific heats of those, aluminum has a specific heat of 0.897 joules per gram degree C. Iron uh, has 0.449 joules per gram degree C. So its value is less, it's about a half as big. So what do these numbers mean? These numbers represent how many joules it takes to raise the temperature of one gram by one degree C. So the lower the number, the easier it is to raise one gram by one degree C. So it will be the iron chair because it has a lower specific heat value. Therefore, it's easier to raise one gram, one degree C, it would become much hotter due to that lower specific heat value there. Okay, so that just leaves vocabulary here. So energy, ability to do work or produce heat, law of conservation of energy, in any chemical reaction energy is converted from one form to another. If it's a case of a roller coaster, going from potential energy to kinetic energy or vice versa, and keeping in mind that we cannot create energy nor can we destroy it. Uh, chemical potential energy, energy a substance has due to its composition. And I mentioned earlier, I would show you this, the bond energy in an octane molecule. It consists of eight carbons here and uh, 18 hydrogens. So if you see all of these bonds here, carbon attached to carbon, carbon attached to H, if I was to break those bonds, energy would be released. So there's a lot of stored energy in an octane molecule. Heat, movement of energy from a hot object to a cooler object. 
So my example here is kind of a poorly drawn hot fire frying pan being thrown in water in a sink. The heat would go from the pan to the water, making that sound. Temperature, measuring the average kinetic energy of molecules. So if you have your thermometer outside, it's measuring the kinetic energy of those air molecules hitting it. Of course, if it's hotter, they move faster, hit harder, etc. The calorie, the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree C. So looking at how much heat is required to do that. And the joule is the SI unit, the metric system or system international unit for measuring energy. And of course the relationship there, one calorie is 4.184 joules. Specific heat, the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of any substance by one degree C. So of course we have tabulated values of that and uh, that's what specific heat is. Okay, so that's the end of 16.1. We'll see you again.